Vidura College, Grade 4. Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift. What are we going to learn today? From this session, we are going to discuss chapter number 2 in Gulliver's Travels book. How Gulliver lived in Lilliput. And from this session, we are going to do loud reading. Chapter 2 How I Lived in Lilliput Early next day, I came out of my house and looked around me. The country was like a garden. The fields were about 12 meters square. The tallest trees seemed to be about 2 meters high. On the other side of me, the city looked like a picture in a child's book. In front of the church, there was a very big house on the other side of the road, about 6 meters away from me. Can you remember at the end of the first chapter, it was mentioned that they have arranged an old church which was the largest building in the whole country for him to use as his house. And the next day, he came out of the house and looked around the city. City looked like a picture in the child's book. According to him, the tallest tree seemed to be about 2 meters high. And... In front of the house, there was a big house. As I stood there, the king came with a great many ladies and gentlemen. They went up onto the top of the house to look at me. After a time, the king came down. He got up on his horse and began to ride nearer to me. But the horse was afraid of such a sight as if a mountain had moved in front of him. My dear kids, King came with many ladies and gentlemen and they went on that building to look at him. Then the king got up on a horse and ride nearer to him. The king who was a very good horseman was not thrown off. But when servants came and held the horse for him, he got down. Then he began to walk around me, but he did not come near into the area I could reach. Food was then brought to me on guard. The queen and the young princess sat on the top of the house and watched me eating. Actually, the king was a good horse rider. Then food was brought to him on cart, and now the queen and the princess were ready to watch Gulliver. After a time, the king went away. A number of soldiers stayed to keep the people from coming too close to me or hurting me. But when I was sitting on the ground near the door of my house, some of the people shot at me. One of the shots nearly hit my eye. Then the captain ordered his soldiers to catch six of the men who had done this. He made the soldiers throw them to me so that I could punish them. Now, my dear children, after few hours, king went away. Number of soldiers were appointed around him. When Gulliver was sitting on the ground, some of people shot at him. Then the captain of the soldiers ordered to catch those six men and throw to Gulliver. We'll see what happened next. I held five of them in one hand and I took the other and raised him to my mouth as if I wanted to eat him. He cried out in fear and the captain and his soldiers were very unhappy at the sight. But I laughed and put the six men carefully on the ground and let them run away. The people and the soldiers seemed to be very pleased at my gentleness and they told the king about it. Next, what happened? He took them in one hand and raised one to his mouth, pretending that he is going to eat. All were unhappy at the sight, because they thought Gulliver is going to eat the man. But he put them on the ground. People and soldiers were very pleased at his gentleness. The king and all his great men had met together to talk about me. Some were afraid that I might get free, which might be very dangerous. Others were afraid that my food would cost them a great deal of money and that the people of the country would not have enough to eat. Some thought that perhaps it might be best to kill me. 
they could do it in my sleep. At the meantime, the king and his great men having a discussion about Gulliver. They had so many questions about Gulliver. Some were afraid about Gulliver's food. Some were afraid that he might get free. So they thought of killing the Gulliver. And also they thought if they did that, the smell of the dead body will cause illness. We'll say what they did to Gulliver. But others thought that if they did that, the smell of the dead body might cause illness in the city. While they were saying these things, the captain of the soldiers came and told them how I had treated the six men. The great men were very pleased and said that they should keep me alive. The king ordered six wise men to teach me, so that I could speak to them and know what they said. My dear kids, while they were discussing, captain and soldiers came and told how he treated the six men. King got pleased and desired to keep him alive and ordered to teach him the Lilliputian language. All this was done and in about three weeks I could speak quite well. The king often came to see me and help my teachers. We began to talk to each other. One of the first things that I said to him was that I wished to be set free. He answered that this could not be done at once, but he must think about it. My dear kids, about from three weeks, he could speak quite well and they started to talk to each other. And he requested to get free, but they didn't accept that request. Then he said, I hope you will not be angry with if I tell some of my soldiers to look at the things you carry about with you. I am afraid that you may have something which might be dangerous to me and to my people. I answered, I shall be glad to show your men everything that I have. The next day, two men came and walked all over me, looking into all parts of my clothing. As now they can talk to each other, they requested Gulliver to show all the things that he carried with him. So, on the next day, they checked all his things he brought with him. They drew pictures of all my things and made knots on each thing. My pencil, my notebook, my pipe. The glasses which I used for my weak eyesight and all other things I had with me. At last the king sent me certain orders saying that if I would keep to this he would let me go free. The next day they checked all the things that Gulliver had carried with him. They drew pictures of all the things he had and finally the king has sent some orders saying that if he would keep to those, he would let him go free. Orders of Golbasto, Momaran, Evlame, Gurdilo, Shefin, Muli, Uligu, King of Lilliput, giant among men, loved and feared by all people upon earth. Number 1 the man mountain shall not leave our country without our orders. Number two, he shall not come into the city without our orders. Two hours before he comes into the city, all people shall go into their houses and remain there. Number three, he shall walk only upon the roads. He shall not walk over the fields or lie down in them. My dear kids, these are the orders that king had sent to Gulliver. Order number one, Gulliver should not leave the country without king's orders. Order number two, Gulliver should not come into the city without king's order. Two hours before he comes into the city, all people should stay in their houses. Order number three, Gulliver was allowed to walk only upon the roads and according to the orders he shall not walk over the fields or lie down in them. 
Order number four. When he walks, he shall take great care not to put his foot upon any of our people or on their horses or on their carts, and he shall not take them up in his hands. Order number five. He shall help our ships and our in the war against the people of the island of Plefisco. Order number six. He shall help our workmen to raise certain great stones for building a wall round our garden. According to order number four, he should walk with a great and he should be very concerned about their people and their horses and their carts and he should not take them up in his hands. According to order number five, he should help their ships and their army. According to order number six, he should have workmen to raise certain great stones for building a wall round their garden. Order number seven. He shall be given such food as would be enough for 1,728 of our people. The reader will notice the number 1,728. It was found by the king's learned men that I was twelve times as high as any one of the people of Lilliput. My mass would then be twelve times into twelve times into twelve times, that of a man of Lilliput. Twelve times twelve is one hundred and forty-four. One hundred and forty-four into twelve is one thousand seven hundred and twenty-eight. My dear children, according to king's learned men, Gulliver was twelve times as high as any one of the people of that land. And according to their calculation, Gulliver was twelve times into twelve times uh, into twelve times that of a man of Lilliput. So they are going to provide food that is enough for 1728 of their people. My dear kids, now we have finished chapter number 1 and chapter number 2. This is the summary. Gulliver left the school when he was 17 years old. Then he went to a ship called Antelope, which was sailing under Captain Pritchard. One day on their way to East Indies, a great wind caught them. Ship cracked on a rock and sank in the sea. But Gulliver was carried to an unknown place by the wind and water. He walked more than half a kilometre but he could not see any houses or people. He got very tired and fell into a deep sleep on that night. When he woke up, he was unable to move. Then he found that his arms and feet were held down to the ground with strings. Thousands of strings had been passed across his body so that he could not move. Although he heard noises around him, he could not see anything. A man less than 15 centimeters high who was dressed like a soldier came over his body. He got surprised and gave a great cry. One little brave man came and shouted, Hekina Degal, and the others replied, Hekina Degal Hekina, but he did not understand anything. In his attempt to get free from strings, he heard a lot thought that the wisest thing to do was lie quietly till night. Quite later he saw some men were building a wooden table, large enough for four little people to stand upon. When the table was ready, four of the little people got up into it and started to speak moving his hands. He did not know the words but from his hands and voice he understood what he meant. My dear kids, can you remember then Gulliver put his hands to his mouth showing that he wanted food. By king's order they brought food for him. Then he asked something to drink. He drank two pots of milk and when he asked for a third they showed that he had drunk all the milk in the country. After he had eaten a person came with a letter from the king ordering that he must be carried to the city. The food he had eaten made him sleepy. 
they had mixed sleeping powder with the food. Gulliver was carried to the city by a cart to meet the king. At the end of the first chapter, we learned that they have arranged an old church which was the largest building in the whole country for him to use as his house. And one of his feet was set in a great ring on the end of many strong strings so that he could only walk about a meter away from his toe. My dear kids, this is the summary of chapter number 2. Next day, he came out of his house and looked around. The city was like a picture in a child's book. Soldiers stayed to keep the people from coming too close to him or hurting him. But while he was sitting on the ground, some of the people shot at him. Captain ordered to catch those men and throw to him. He held five of them in one hand and took the other and raised him as if he wanted to eat him. But he released those six. People were very pleased at his gentleness. King got to know how he treated the six men. So he ordered six wise men to teach him the Lilliputian language. In about three weeks he could speak quite well. They began to talk to each other. They asked Gulliver to show all the things he carried with him. He showed all the things he had with him. King sent some orders to him saying that if he would keep to this, they would let him free. My dear children, now you have finished up to page number 14 in Gulliver's Travels book. Hope you have enjoyed the story. Have an awesome day. Thank you.